good afternoon. I realized that I have not come on for a very long time and done a haul of some of the books and things that I've been buying. And today I had really great luck at garage sales. So I thought I'll just pop on and show you what I found. Um, I also went to a couple Goodwills on my way home. I'm always on the lookout for books and craft stuff because clearly I need both. I don't, but I do love both. So, you know, it's like a treasure hunt. If you know, you know. If you like to do those things, then you get me. Anyway, I'll start with just some things. I just opened uh, the bags, Spirit Fingers, opened the bags um, to see what else was in there because if I... These are Goodwill things. If I see enough that I like, I just buy the bag, but there's always like stuff wedged in it, which is fun. So this first bag has a huge assortment of wooden beads. And I had just seen on, I think it was Instagram maybe, um, some really cool lanyards with just plain old wooden beads. And I thought to myself, that would be really fun to make. So I have some smalls, some bigger ones, and some tiny. And then I have a feeling these will not be on a lanyard, <laughs> but I don't know what these are. They are knobs, that's fun. So anyway, and then some of these little spools in there. I don't think I'll probably end up using those. Some little wooden angel. Oh, this is cute. It's like a little Christmas set. I mean, like I could put that in my treasure box. Whoops, if I can't, you know, if I don't break them first. And then some little hearts. So that was kind of fun. And that was a couple bucks, so not bad. Okay, I'm gonna have a little problem on account if they're falling out. Can't be easy, you know, it just can't be easy. So anyway, these are um, D and J Hobby. I don't even know where that is, but somebody might have had them for a very long time. So I'll just put those aside for now and I'll figure that out later. Whoops, stray bead. Um, and then in another one, this one I thought was gonna be more exciting, but it's really not that exciting, but I'll use all the little goodies still. This, well, will I? Yes, one day, probably, maybe. Um, this is a little kit to make. These are little, um, they look like little gems and you can put a little treat inside and it was brand new. I've used these before and just used the things in them to make what I want. So it had that, it had this, which is a project kit from Stampin' Up. And again, this was only a couple bucks. And it's all brand new, so it has some twine, it has some envelopes, some paper, all the things to make all those. So I thought, even if I don't make those, it's still fun. And the kids at school, again, like little fun things. In that same bag that I didn't know about was this, and I do love these. They're reading highlighters. And so you put them over the words on a page and it um, helps the words to stand out to uh, kids. So I've used these in the past and I uh, don't know where half of them are. So this was exciting to find in there. And then this was just a little uh, dotted notebook. It has the grid, the dots on it. And so I can practice lettering in there. So that was kind of fun. And then there was also in, I think it was the same bag. I honestly don't remember. Um, sorry, um, things are falling, bad things are happening. This was in there. I mean, I don't know that I'll ever use them, but that's okay. Also, who doesn't need more glitter? I don't need more glitter. Nobody needs glitter. Glitter's a bad idea. Anyway, I do love it. And then, um, there was this little pad of paper. It has all the bright colors, which I love. So that was in there. This was in there. This was what I really had my eye on. It is fabrics from Recollections and it's a Halloween themed one, but they're fabrics instead of papers. And I thought that would be really kind of fun to play around with. So I got that. And then also in that kit were these two, which these are the best erasers. 
So I got two brand new ones of those. And then this is also what I was really after. They're metallic colored pencils. And I don't have those. And the price was 10 bucks originally. So the fact that I got all that and wait, there's more for a couple dollars was pretty good. This card game was in there. Um, it's really fun. I have the full size one, but this would be fun to stick in the glove box. We could play on the road. And then this is full of something I said I would never do again. <laughs> But you know, memories fade. Um, uh, they're lettered beads. And this whole thing was a couple bucks. I think, was it in with something? Yeah, it was this and something else for a couple bucks. But anyway, I figured if I decide to make those bracelets again for the going back to school crowd, I'm set. Unless of course, I mean, it looked to me like there wasn't one letter only in here, you know what I mean? So hopefully it's not um, just a few different letters. If it is, again, kids will love it. So I am kind of happy with those finds. Um, this was also in a bag. It's a green clothespin because I don't know why anyone would ever need that, but it can hold notes and stuff on your desk. So cool. And then also I got my son, this, the artist, this huge bag, and I might actually keep one or two for myself, but this huge bag of paint brushes, this was eight bucks, but it looks like there's, I mean, paint brushes, the really good quality ones, and I'm hoping that these are them. He'll know, but those are lots of money. So hopefully he will get some use out of those. Also, this. I have had this on my Amazon wish list for a long time. I think it's on my classroom wish list because I want one of these to spin for um, next year. I want to, oops, I loosened it a little bit instead of tightened it. Next year, I want to, um, uh, I don't think I, oh, I tightened it maybe too much. Um, I want to implement more of the whole brain teaching strategies. I think I said that a couple videos ago. Maybe I didn't, maybe it was all in my head, but anyway, I do. And so they give stars for, um, uh, things that are, the kids are, it's called super improvers. And for things that the kids are showing improvement in, they give stars. So this could be, this was obviously somebody who had some kind of a um, salon kind of uh, business. So this is just dry erase. You just, uh, you know, rub it off. Anyway, I am going to put like double stars or, you know, add a star or whatevs. And that is going to be part of what I use. Plus it sounds cool, right? It feels like you're on the prices, right? But it could be used for lots of things. I could also put kids names on it. There's not enough for one kid per thingy, but, um, you know, I could do some sort of something with that. So loads of fun there. And now we come to yours and my favorite, the books. Maybe not, but mine. This one is hilarious. I've read it before. It's called um, Mother Bruce instead of Mother Goose. It's just silly, silly fun. And it doesn't even matter the grade level you teach. This is just funny. And so it's just a play on um, Mother Goose. So Mother Bruce by Ryan T. Higgins. That one I found for, I think, a quarter. And along with a bunch of, okay, I'm gonna put some of these down. I'll try to, ouch, try to group them by like sort of category. Okay, so really I'm done because this is the only other category, books, uh, kids books. So I got a bunch of these, six in all, and they're called Zoe's Rescue Zoo by Amelia Cobb. I've never read them, but she had a bunch in the series. And so I thought I should probably have those. Here's the weird thing. I bought uh, five, seven, 10, 11. So of course, if I like them, I'll have to find them at the library or buy them on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Here's the weird thing. These are both number eight and they don't appear to be a different series. I mean, they look the same. So that's a mystery that I'll have to solve, but they look really cute. They're just um, 
it says appeals to second, third graders reading level grade three. So that could go anywhere from first to fourth, depending, first would be a push, but fourth would not be. So I think that, um, you know, third right in the middle there would be great. Anyway, got those to play around with this summer. Then the rest of what I got are me books. So I went to this one lady's house and she told me that her sister um, is the organizer of their book club and it's her sister herself and then a bunch of friends and I kind of wanted to be invited but nobody invited me which is fine I'll start my own book club but it was a mystery book club and she said my sister does a great job researching all the books and she was so proud of her sister's selections that I couldn't not walk away with five I bought five books so she said that um all of them have very much twists and turns and things in the story. So knowing that and knowing that I like those, I got The Personal Assistant, a novel by Kimberly Bell. And this is the best selling author of Dear Wife and the Marriage Lie. I've not read either, but it looked good. So again, twisty turny. I enjoy that. This book, I have read um, uh, another book by this author, Alice Feeney. This one is called Rock, Paper, Scissors. And the nice thing was all of these are pretty new books, like 21, 22. This one's 2021. Um, I read Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney, and I liked it. It was twisty, and so that was good. So I'm hoping I love that one as well. The next one I bought from her is called The Playground. Um, best-selling author of The Daughter, uh, Jane Shemilt, Shemilt. And this is what that one looks at, like, looks like. Here's The Daughter. I don't know if you can zoom in and see that or not, but that is the other book I have not read. But again, this lady was selling it, man. She was so sure, and I believed her. Um, this one I've seen in Target, I want to say. Um, it's called Just the Nicest Couple by Mary uh, Kubica. But Local Woman Missing is her uh, bestseller that she's written. And I don't think I've read it yet, but I own it somewhere, somehow. I know I've seen it here <laughs> at my house. So probably on my bookshelf if I'm I'm thinking clearly, which I'm generally not. Um, 2023. So this is a brand spanking new book. I paid two bucks for each of these. I mean, so I paid a total of 10 and I got five books and that's like a half of one book. You know how it is when you buy the hardcovers, which I don't love, but it's okay because, you know, um, I... I am fine with that. Okay, so this one was written in 2022. Um, Sally Hep Hepworth, yeah. This is called The Younger Wife. And I have read The Good Sister by Sally Hepworth and liked it. I think I listened to that one actually. And then this author has, uh, does she have a list of other books she wrote? Yes, The Secrets of Midwives, that one sounds really I love midwife kind of stories the things we keep the mother's promise the family next door the mother-in-law I listened to that one and the good sister they were both good so anyway excited to read that one so this was the five from the uh lady whose sister is awesome at picking books <laughs> so very excited about this okay almost all the rest are cookbooks but not all at the same house that I got these and the Mother Bruce, I also got this book. Oh, and funny story, the books that I just told you on my uh, re most recent video, unless I post this one first, then it will be the mo one that comes after. Um, Finley Donovan is killing it. Finley Donovan, the one I'm listening to now is Jumps the Gun, but there's one in the middle. Anyway, um, she had two of those three books, but I didn't buy them because I've already listened to, I'm listening to one right now. They're really cute. They're just, it's a good murder mystery series. And how do I call murder mysteries cute? They just are, because they're silly and nobody actually kills anyone. Well, that's not true. Um, 
it's like accidental deaths. Anyway, this book I got there, it's called The Writing Retreat. And it, I've seen it before and it looks good. The author is Julia Bartz. Oh, sorry, there we go. Um, and this is, I think, a relatively new one too. Oh yeah, 2023. How about me? Score in the brand new books. And then I also got this one there and I have no idea why I bought this because it just sounds so bizarre and weird. Well, okay, that's why I bought it. Convenient Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. Not sure if I said that right. It looks silly and goofy. And the lady, I, I love meeting people at garage sales. I know that's dorky, but here I am. Um, she was talking to me about her sister. She goes, yeah, she gives me all her books when she reads them and I don't read them. So I'm just getting rid of them. But anyway, she said that she likes really weird books and um, so do I sometimes. So the first uh, little blurb on the top, the little recommendation says, an exhilaratingly weird and funny Japanese novel about a long-term convenience store employee. Unsettling and totally unpredictable, my copy is now heavily underlined by Sally Rooney of The Guardian. I don't know if that's a book or a publication. Anyway, looks kind of funny or interesting or both. Anyway, the rest were cookbooks. Now, I'm a little bit sad about this next purchase because originally I had four of these, well, I still do, two of them were repeats and I was just getting ready to brag to my husband that I have not yet bought any repeat bought bought bought, bought where did that come from bought any repeats purchased anyway this one I just I collect these and I love these and they're so pretty and I just they make me happy to touch them anyway this one uh is farmer's market stuff just fresh, uh, I almost said fresh zucchini because it does say zucchini down here and my eyeballs caught that, but fresh veggies. So love that for me. Then this one was the one I was thinking I might have actually already had, but I didn't. It was two other ones, but that's okay. I'm going to gift them to friends and they'll be happy. So this is quick and easy Christmas. I love, I just love setting these out like as uh, decorations around the holidays on my little book stands and so that makes me just happy. And you know, Becky's garlic soup, that's not only for Christmas. I feel like Becky makes that in February maybe too. Anyway, so I got those two. Then at one person's house, I got a bunch of cookbooks. This was one of them, Breakfast, the most important book about the most important crossed out best meal of the day. And I am a cookbook fanatic. Do I cook a lot? No, no, I don't. But I do sometimes and I love the way that they look and I love to read them. And a lot of times you can learn just about other cultures and things through cookbooks and I love that. So there is the truth behind why I buy cookbooks. Um, <laughs> when you're broke, breakfast is hot buttered hope. That just is funny. Anyway, it's got some good recipes in there. I, I have a rule when I, uh, ooh, know your coffee, an espresso field guide. Um, when I pick up a cookbook, I turn to three different pages randomly, and if they look appealing in any way, shape, or form, then I can have the book. It's a very low bar that I've set, but it's kind of a good, good uh, rule of thumb, I think. So anyway, there is um, all kinds of different uh, you know, little tips and tricks in here. Um, yum. I would never make that because it would never look like that. It would look like a pan of ooh, but I like that I can do it if I change my mind on that. Another one I got at, I believe, yep, the same person's house is called Simple Green Meals by Jen Hansard, author of Simple Green Smoothies. I love, love, love love cooking veggies and oh this looks so good okay so i can't have the bun but look at the sprouts on there garden burgers it just they look so good and maybe i'll make it you never know this one i will blackened sprouts yum love the brussels so lots of good ones in there um i'll keep to my oh look at that i forgot um this i got at another house um little bookmarks for a dollar aren't they cute I love apple, watermelon, orange, pineapple, and they're the magnetic ones, and they're scented, I know. 
um, at the same house as those uh, two that I just showed you. This one, I just, it's one of those that just, I love the look of it. It's called Beyond Bacon. Paleo recipes that respect the whole hog. Funny. And just look at how cool, it looks like a chalkboard. That's why I love it. Teachers love chalkboards, the end. Um, Asian short ribs. Like a lot of these looked like something I could absolutely make and eat and enjoy. Um, insanely awesome meatloaf. Yes, please. Uh, not that one. Sauteed green beans. Katie, I'll send it to you. Katie loves herself some green beans. They're her favorite. So that one looked good. And then the last one. Uh, yeah. Last one I got at uh, this garage sale it was called the Chelsea Market Cookbook. It's got, this is a little like sleeve on the front. I'll hold it up. But I just, it's, ah, uh, it's so pretty. And I mean, this was a $30 cookbook I paid a dollar for. <laughs> How do you not? But this one shows lots of, um, ooh, carne asada tacos. I mean, I'm sure I have a dozen recipes for that, but it shows um, a lot about the local, local uh, places and stuff like that. And I love reading these cause I just do, it's a book. So anyway, that one, super happy to have. Then I have just a couple more. And I should do another like update on my shelves because they're getting more robust. The ones that Katie and hubby made me at uh, Thanksgiving time, they're so pretty and I love them so much and it just, I don't know if you have anything that you collect or you love so much that when you look at it, you just get happy. <laughs> That's how I feel about my books. All of my books, really, whenever I see books, I get happy, but especially if they're mine in my living room on my bookshelf. And some days when I just need to decompress, I will sit in my comfy chair, pull a book off the shelf and just start looking through it. I understand that that is the whole idea behind books and I'm nailing it. <laughs> anyway, this one, um, I honestly don't remember. Oh, I think this was Goodwill. Um, easy Mexican food favorites. One of my all time favorite foods is anything Mexican food related. So I have a hundred probably cookbooks that um, are rooted in Mexican food, but who cares? Not me, that's who not. Anyway, easy cheesy chicken enchiladas. This one is, whoops, isn't as pretty. <gasps> I saw it, hold on, queso fundito, I love it. And that's fried. So this is not something I could have very often, but who cares? Queso blanco dip, pork pozole, uh, fruit stand style chili lime fruit. Ooh, I don't know about that. I think I should. Anyway, that one's fun. This one I got, the last two I got at Goodwill. I love Trader Joe's so much. I have another Trader Joe's cookbook, or is it? Yeah, I do. This one though is a hardback $25 cookbook I got for a couple bucks at the Goodwill. And it is so beautiful. No, I will not be making Mahi Mahi because I don't eat anything fish related, but that's fine. Somebody else might like it. Um, but just beautiful, my big fat Greek quiche. <laughs> Funny. And all of the things in here are uh, at least predominantly from Trader Joe's as far as the um, ingredients go. The miso noodle soup, just fun stuff. So I love that one. And then the last one I got, let's scoot these over. That's a large stack of books. This one is called Homemade in the Oven. And when I first picked it up, I thought, eh, it's probably not going to be that great. It's really great. I love the pictures. I'll show you. Probably, uh, I should show the cover. I love the uh, way that it's decorated. It is by Yvette Van Boven. And let me show you some of the pictures. They're hand drawn. And I love that. I'll go really close so you can see. Isn't that pretty? I love that. And Clementine yogurt cake. Oh, oh. I've been having a thing lately, a little love affair with, um, Cara Cara oranges or Cara Cara. I don't know how to say them, but they're so good. I think I also talked about them in the last video that um, 
I was looking at sprouts for some blood oranges for a recipe and they didn't have any and I asked what was closest to them and the man there working in produce told me the cara cara or cara cara oranges would be best. Ooh, fish stuff, gross. Um, but anyway, I think this is a really cool, cool, cool recipe book. So anyway, isn't that fun? And that is, I believe, all I wanted to show you today. I just felt kind of bad because I haven't, I've been doing lots of school videos because, you know, that's what I do, like 90 hours a week. Only 70, just kidding. Um, but I wanted to also talk about my other addiction, which is books and craft supplies. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Watch some of my other videos. I have lots of good books on there to read. Um, and I'll keep trying to talk about books. I know it's going to be a hard task for me, but I'm going to give it my all. Have a great day. I will see you later.